Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna talk to you about the best fishing kayaks of 2020. This is my kayak, get yourself one. There he is. Yeah! Okay, so listen, before I jump into the video, I'm gonna give you a heads up that you need to watch this video to the end because not only am I gonna tell you the best fishing kayaks of 2020, but I consider myself the authority on telling you the best fishing kayaks of this decade. And if you hang around all the way to the end, I'm gonna tell you what I consider the best fishing kayak of all times. Now, before you guys say, oh, I know what your buddy's gonna pick, I think you'll be surprised. Be sure to watch to the end. All right, guys, so listen, I'm gonna make this a casual conversation. I'm not doing a bunch of fancy cutaways and things like that because I want this to be more about the information. One of the things that I'm gonna bring you along the way in this discussion is not just why these boats were popular, but what those boats and those companies and maybe what those boats for those companies did for the industry as well as for that specific model's you know, bottom line, which is sales. So I'm gonna start off the best fishing kayaks of 2020 with the boat that won best of show at ICAST. Uh, really one of the only true standards for measurement in this sport other than sales. And those numbers are all over the place because not everybody reports and not everybody reports accurately, but the Old Town Autopilot 120 uh, is gonna be right there in the mix for the best fishing kayaks of 2020. Now, I'm not gonna jump into the details of each boat because I'm gonna do that when I get into the best fishing kayaks of the decade. So I'm just gonna run through what I consider the best fishing kayaks of 2020. I hate clickbait videos where they tell you one thing in the title and it takes you 45 minutes to get to the point. This might be a long video, but I'm gonna give you the juice right up front. So my second kayak of 2020 that has to be listed in the best of 2020, this boat's everywhere. There's a lot of, of the top competitors using it, a lot of recreational anglers using it. And honestly, because of where I live in Tennessee, I probably see this boat on the water locally more than anywhere else, but it has a really big presence nationwide. And that is the Jackson Big Rig, specifically the Jackson Big Rig uh, HD. And it's definitely popular as a big boy boat. So that'll be a boat that I'm spending some time in this year. I know a lot of you guys are wanting me to do more boat overviews. So coming in at the second boat, not in any particular rank, but the second boat that is definitely on the best of 2020, the Jackson Big Rig HD. So coming in next, I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the way because I know a lot of people, oh man, he's, a, he's definitely going to pick his boat, the Bonafide SS-127. Uh, not only is the Bonafide SS-127 the boat that I've spent the most time in in 2020, it's the boat I've spent the most time in for the last three years. Uh, but just like everything else, things change. And so this year, well, next year in 2021, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of boat overviews in other boats. And I'll be able to tell you how those boats compare in contrast or however you want to look at it to the Bonafide uh, SS-127. But if you've tried to buy a Bonafide this time of year, you know that they're sold out everywhere. So you can't really do much better than selling every boat that you can make and making more boats than you thought you would ever make in a year. So the Bonafide SS-127 is definitely on that list of the best fishing kayaks of 2020. Now, another boat that I spent a lot of time in over the years, not so much in this season, uh, but over the last couple of years, uh, that's a great boat. It actually fits that that plastic piro kind of a feel of the type of of kayaks that i grew up in and that is the new canoe pursuit 12. i'm gonna let this uh, boat go by so the new canoe pursuit 12 is not only a boat that has done really well from a sales standpoint uh, some top pros have switched to that platform uh, it's one of the best boats out there for mounting a bow mounted trolling motor on running your wiring to the back of the boat, setting your batteries up in the back so you can balance the boat out. It's an open cockpit. It's got a 360 degree uh, swivel seat. Actually, I said I'm not gonna talk about the boats until I get to the best boats of the decade. It's gonna be on that list because 2020 is in this decade, but the new canoe Pursuit 12 definitely makes that list. All right, so the next boat coming in on the list is a boat that I spent a little bit of time in. I really wish I would have got to spend more time in it uh, but I ended up giving the boat away when I picked it up as a as a demo and for uh, using for our cameraman, and that is the Native Titan 12. Now there is a bigger boat in that series, the 13.5, but I just think that the Titan 12, because of its size and maneuverability, maybe even price point, uh, just outshined the 13.5, especially in 2020. Um, but the Native Titan 12 definitely makes the list. Now. 
the boat coming in next that may not be as popular with tournament anglers, uh, but is definitely one of the most popular boats out there is the Feel Free Allure 11.5. Now, that boat I'll talk a little bit about in the best of for the decade, but the Lure 11.5 with the wheel and the keel and the seat that looks comfortable, we'll get into that in a minute, uh, is one of the best selling fishing kayaks on the market. It's not something that's even up for debate. That boat took the industry by storm a couple years ago and it is still one of the top selling boats for any dealer selling uh, feel free. And it's a hot boat on the used market. It's sought after, you see people asking about it. So the Lure 11.5 definitely makes that list. All right, so coming in, as what I'm gonna say is the last boat, definitely not the least boat, but we're gonna talk about where it ranks later in the best of the decade. Uh, but arguably the top boat of 2020, aside from the the uh, ICAST rankings, is the Hobie PA 14, specifically the 360 model. And so guys, there it is. That is my top boats for 2020, best of fishing kayaks for 2020. So if you're looking for a boat to, uh, to consider for your purchase towards the end of the year, if you're gonna make that last minute purchase for Christmas, or if you wanna set something up for 2021, those are the boats that I consider the best fishing kayaks of 2020. All right guys, so let's jump into what I consider the best fishing kayaks of the past decade, and be sure to hang out to the end where I tell you what I consider the best fishing kayak of all times and tell you why. I consider it the best fishing kayak of all time. Now, some of this stuff is going to be subjective. I mean, anytime you put the word best in front of something, it's, suggest it's suggestive. But I feel like, you know, I've been around for a minute. I've got a lot of insights into this industry. Got my finger on the pulse, and I have more data access than most people uh, because of a lot of the companies that I work with and the, and the surveys that we do and those kind of things. So it's, I'm not just kind of winging it here. But we're going to jump into what, what I would say is one of the boats in this decade that caused a splash, caused a bit of a controversy. There was a there was a debate over is it even a kayak, and that is the Blue Sky Boatworks uh, Angler 360. Now they have a different model called the Pro, but we're going to speak specifically on the Blue Sky Boatworks Angler 360. And there's a couple things that we're going to talk about here. For one, I like the 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 barrier pushing of this boat and what it did and the concept of the the dual pontoons and then everything else is outfitted i like the fact that the moving of the boat with the system to move such a big boat around is integrated into it uh, a lot like the boondock system is for native and uh we'll talk about that later but i like the fact that this platform was designed to sit up high i like the the steep downward angle of the pedal drive system i think the flex drive from Jackson works better on this boat than it does even on most of the other uh, Jackson boats. And then I like the fact that they come out with a really clean, easy way to do a transom mount in the back to put your tiller operated trolling motors on. But what I really love about this boat is it pushed the, the, the definition of what a fishing kayak is. And in many people's minds, it kind of surpassed that and it's not really a fishing kayak, but you could make that argument for most fishing kayaks, modern fishing kayaks anyway. Uh, if you're gonna say the Blue Sky Boat Works is not a fishing kayak, then neither is the Native Titan or the Hobie Pro Angler or any of those other boats. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna call them kayaks because in our community, especially here at KBF, we call them kayaks. So that Blue Sky Boat Works Angler 360 is definitely one of the top fishing kayaks of the past decade. That swivel seat, the adjustments, the pontoon design, the power pole integration, everything about that boat makes it one that makes it make the list. And it's definitely something I'm going to spend some time in this year and you guys should do, uh, put it on your list of consideration. All right, so let's jump into the next boat that I consider one of the, uh, the top fishing kayaks of the past decade. All right, so I'm going to get this one out of the way early, even though it's one of those boats that just came out. Uh, and that's the Old Town Autopilot 120. Love the electronics integration. I love the fact that Old Town came into the game. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out a couple of Old Town boats while I'm doing this discussion about the Old Town Autopilot. I think the Old Town Predator, the Old Town MX, um, all make the list of top boats for the past decade. Uh, but the shining star, in my opinion, in the Old Town offering uh, is the Autopilot 120, and that's because of the integration. Now, they did a motorized Predator uh, I just think that that boat didn't resonate like the Autopilot 120 is, is resonating. I think the Autopilot 120 made a really big splash. They did a great job 
of combining the marketing of that boat with the Bass Nation uh, kayak series. And I think it's just one of those things where anglers are looking for those boats that are finished, that are ready to go. And that boat and motor package, especially if a guy's going to finance it or, you know, pay for it on a credit card or something like that, they want that package where it's one purchase together. And I applaud Old Town for going in that direction. Before I move away from Old Town, I want to say also that for you guys that don't know the backstory, Old Town is part of Johnson Outdoors. Johnson Outdoors is the parent company, um, and they also own Ocean Kayak. So for years, there wasn't an Old Town kayak, and when bass fishing for, from a kayak blew up, uh, the folks at Johnson Outdoors were smart enough to make that pivot and put their fishing kayaks for freshwater specifically, but really bring back that Old Town name, that Old Town branding, because a lot of guys don't want to fish freshwater in a kayak called Ocean Kayak. But again, kudos to Johnson Outdoors for making that decision. Um, and kudos to Johnson Outdoors for making an outstanding platform with the uh, Autopilot 120. Definitely one of the best fishing kayaks of this decade, even though it just came out this year. All right, so before I finish up the Old Town line, I also want to talk about another boat that Old Town made a really big splash with. And again, I'm not minimizing the impact of the Predator, uh, but I just don't think the Predator really struck a chord with the industry. There were definitely pro you know, proponents of it. There were definitely folks that swore by it. But the Old Town Topwater, in my opinion, set the table uh, for Old Town becoming a legitimate player uh, in the premier kayak fishing space. But what I also love about Old Town, love it or hate it, depending on who you ask, is that they're also available uh, in some of your more big, your big box stores. And though I don't really like the fact that big box stores kind of, in a lot of cases, dumb down uh, kayak fishing, I do like what it does for availability to getting that boat out there in front of people. And the Old Town Topwater did a good job at the right price point of exposing people to a premium fishing kayak. And so that Old Town Topwater is definitely one of the boats that makes the list for top fishing kayaks of the decade. And I think it's one of the smartest moves uh, that any kayak company has made in the past decade, but it's definitely one of the smartest moves that the folks at Johnson Outdoors or Old Town uh, Canoes ever made. So yeah, Old Town Topwater, picking one of them up this year. All right, so let's jump into the next boat manufacturer and the series of boats that I think they made that made one of the biggest splashes in the kayak fishing industry in the past decade, and that would be Jackson Kayak. There's no denying that the guys from Jackson, uh, Eric Jackson himself, the team over there with Damon Bungard and James McBeth and Jameson Redding and a whole bunch of people come together, uh, but you gotta give credit where credit's due. Drew Gregory uh, was at the forefront of pushing kayak fishing design with the folks at Jackson Kayak. Uh, the first kayak with a lawn chair style seat, uh, the first kayak with a uh, stand-up assist strap, the first fishing kayak that was designed specifically for river fishing. And it wasn't a wreck boat that we called an angler version by dropping a couple of uh, flush mount rod holders in it. So though a lot of guys like myself were out there beating companies up, trying to get them to make fishing kayaks, and we had adapted a lot of kayaks to be, you know, fishing kayaks like, you know, several boats that came out before Jackson. I think Jackson really lit a fire in the industry by doing that high-low seat, the lawn chair style seat, um, now I will say that the Wilderness Systems Commander had a seat that folded down and tucked in. It had a high seating position and a low seating position. And that was the first true high and low seating position on a fishing kayak. But Jackson was the first to push that envelope with a high low seat with the lawn chair style seat. And that revolutionized the way folks um, design fishing kayaks. And it also lit a fire under other kayak companies uh, butts and I can tell you that I was in the room when a lot of those conversations happened and there was comparisons to Jackson for decisions that were being made uh, for the next round of fishing kayak design so the Jackson Kusa is 100% got to be on that list the Kusa HD in my opinion took it to the next level um, the Jackson Big Rig is 100% in the conversation we talked about that in the in the uh, in the best fishing kayaks of 2020 but let me tell you why that kayak is so important it was truly one of the first fishing kayaks that was designed to handle big dudes it was one of the first fishing kayaks that was designed where it was stable by wide instead of just stable by design it was one of the first fishing kayaks where rod protection integration was built into it with the channel uh, and it was feature rich and then it was also the first fishing kayak platform 
that Jackson did the HD concept where they included a lot of the premium stuff and even went so far as to do an HD Pro. Uh, that didn't last long, but the way that they were thinking as a company uh, helped change the way uh, that we do business and it changed the way that other kayak manufacturers thought and it really started the fishing kayak specific manufacturing uh, deal. Uh, there'll be a company we talk about a little later that didn't wait on Jackson to do that, but I'll talk about that in its own. But Jackson really uh, kicked up a lot of interest in all the other fishing kayak companies in making and targeting uh, fishing specific designs. So you got to give credit where, uh, where credit's due. So one other thing I want to talk about with Jackson real quick is because I talked about, I was going to talk about the best fishing kayaks of the decade, but also what some of the contributions that those companies made. And Jackson was the first company to establish a media house. I think they called it JK, I think they still call it a JK Media House. And what I mean by that is they really started to push the envelope on what type of content that kayak fishing companies needed to create to be relevant, but it also resonated with anglers. Uh, a lot of uh, anti-Jackson people uh, used to call it drinking the Jackson Kool-Aid, but really what it was was Jackson was relating to anglers as anglers. They were getting out on the water and creating authentic, unstaged, realistic content. And so one of the you know pivotal points in the development of our industry uh, was Jackson having the foresight to establish the JK Media House and to creating a lot of their own content, you know, sponsoring Jim Salmon's kayak fishing show. Uh, definitely didn't hurt but and it was a big move as well but jackson having the foresight and the and the understanding of the industry to establish their own media house was uh was definitely a power move in the industry and one that i think changed the way we market fish and kayaks all right guys so we're going to jump into a brand that i think really truly made an impact in the kayak fishing industry in the past decade and that's native watercraft now native watercraft was founded by uh, a gentleman who had formerly founded sold and moved on uh, from Wilderness Systems, a guy named Andy Zimmerman. And Andy Zimmerman uh, had the, you know, the, the, the wherewithal, the industry expertise to understand that he was going to establish the first fishing kayak from the ground up brand. Now, I want to reiterate that. Um, other companies out there, Wilderness Systems, Jackson, Hobie, you name it, Old Town, Ocean Kayak, those were all companies that were designed as fishing or as kayak companies that also made fishing kayaks. So one of the landmark uh, moments, one of the marquee moments, one of the, the industry defining moments of our last decade um, was the fact that Native Watercraft was established as a fishing kayak brand from the ground up. And that's very important uh, to understand. And one of the boats that really created a craze and I'm gonna smack the folks at native upside the head as long as it takes me to get them to bring this boat back uh, is the ultimate 12 now the ultimate 12 was actually the impetus for me getting a company that I was working with at a time at that time to build the boat that I had been working on for several years couldn't get them to make uh, and I love the fact that they pushed that envelope I love the fact that they that they p partnered up with a pioneer in the industry mr. Jimbo Metter and they really made that hybrid canoe kayak style boat uh super popular but they then moved right into the pedal drive game uh developed their own pedal drive you got to give them credit they were the first with the reverse um and they changed the way people think about a fishing kayak by going with the titan 13.5 now i just got to say that boat was designed without even trying to look like a kayak right it was said let's make a little boat uh, even the hobie pa has a tapered look in the front tapered in the back it's got more of that kayak look but what the folks at native did with the titan series is they said let's just build a little one-man boat that's bad to the bone and let's decide what we want it to house first and build the boat around that instead of building the boat and then trying to how to trying to figure out how to put everything else on it so with the power pole integration with the paddle storage with the rod storage with the 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 tray under the seat the things like that that they came up with and i also think that native was really the first company to do their own branded accessories uh really well so the native watercraft line of of complementary accessories 
uh, was really an industry first. We'll talk about you know what Hobie did later, but Hobie did a really good job of that later in the game. And they also did a really good job of taking other people's products and putting their name on it, uh, kind of like Harley Davidson. But Native was really the first company that really did those branded accessories well so that the, the people that buy into the brand, that have that brand loyalty, have that lifestyle uh, connection with the brand. And so Native Watercraft built from the ground up as a kayak fishing company. Uh, the Titan 13.5, the Titan 12, and the Native Ultimate 12, uh, in my opinion, are definitely on the list for top fishing kayaks of the past decade. So let's jump into the brand that I am currently most known for. Uh, and that is Bonafide, okay? The Bonafide SS-127 uh, is by far one of the fastest to take root in the industry uh, brands that I've ever seen happen. I was blessed and fortunate uh, and happy to be a part of that. Uh, you know, nobody, it's no secret that Luther Cyphers was the visionary behind that brand. And it's also no secret that Luther's like a brother from another mother and one of my best friends on the planet. So it was great to be able to go through that process um, again, I'm going to be going non-exclusive in 2021 so I can answer your questions better, so I can use different fishing kayaks and so that I can expand my horizons. But I have really thoroughly enjoyed my time with Bonafide as an exclusive um, kayak manufacturer for my shows and for me personally. Uh, and I'll still use a Bonafide. I'm just going to shake things up. But the Bonafide SS-127 had some real industry firsts with the the true stable by design versus just stable by wide with the catamaran style hole uh the the double header latches that allow you to open the front hatch from the front or the back that makes storage easier the sliding junk drawer be beneath the seat which you know is similar to what native had uh but it didn't slide out so that was a, a different deal um and some really small things like the omni hooks that were later moved over to the yak attack lineup and the rear hatch and the uh, the, the, again, the dual keel in the back for your, your, your skid plates and your handle that tucks away and is hidden. And then the comfort grip and some of the little small things. And I'm going to stop before I sound like I'm just, uh, ranting and I'm super biased, but I have spent more time in that boat in this decade than any other fishing kayak that I've been in. Uh, so I'm biased. I'm 100% going to tell you that. And that's why I kind of stuck it in the middle of the pack. Uh, the Bonafide SS-127, definitely makes the list um you know the little sister of that boat the ss107 did well in you know small markets smaller boats but it just didn't have uh the staying power of a lot of the other boats on the list and it wasn't as popular as ss127 so the bonafide ss127 definitely makes the list of one of the best fishing kayaks of the last decade so moving on from bonafide we're going to jump into a brand that uh, I've had a great relationship with. I love uh, most of the guys on the team. When I say the team, I mean the fishing team, not the actual company. I love everybody uh, at the company. Blake, who owns New Canoe, does a really good job of keeping the, the team over there small. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about three boats in their lineup. I'm gonna talk about the Pursuit, I'm gonna talk about the Flint, and I'm gonna talk about the Frontier. What I like about the New Canoe Frontier is it really redefined uh, the fishing kayak category by being just super wide, super stable. And to be honest with you, it resonated with folks using it as a tandem, using it as a duck boat, using it as a boat with a motor on it, uh, probably more than I even thought it would uh, in the beginning. So that really put New Canoe on the map. They pivoted with the design of the Pursuit, which is a more sleek, easier to paddle, cover more water, uh, you know, more of a boat that is going to appeal to the performance minded person, yet it was still super stable, still super clean, uh, good lines, good rig ability, good fish ability, super comfortable seat, you know, all of those things. And, and they also stepped out and partnered with Yak Attack and made some accessories that were specifically designed for their boat, like a different black pack and mounting pads and They've just done a really good job of fit and finish with their boats and partnering with companies to make integration of motors and to make integrations of power poles and things like that just super easy to accomplish instead of leaving it up uh, to the angler. So kudos to them. But I think the boat that really would be something that New Canoe kind of lit a fire with, and there's some pun intended because the boat's called the Flint, but they really did light a fire uh, with this boat. I would go so far as to say that the Flint was the first true fishing kayak 
to go below the 999 mark in the modern era but include all of the premium features in other words they did a really good job of giving you as much as they possibly could for that sub thousand dollar price point i think that lit a fire uh, honestly even under bona fide uh, to make the rs117 i think it really had a lot to do with um you know uh, some of the impetus for the pricing of the of the top water uh, from Old Town, I think it did a lot for Jackson, you know, producing the bite and some of those other boats that come in that sub thousand dollars. So I got to give credit where credit's due. It's ironic that the boat's called the Flint, but it did light a fire in driving that mid price point or that upper middle price point. Uh, and it's a pr fantastic little boat with a lot of features, great little river boat, and pretty much everybody that I've ever met that owns a Flint loves it. Uh, and they, it's almost like a Pringles too. I don't know anybody that owns a Flint that owns just one. So it's also uh, a really smart platform for a new canoe uh, and definitely one of the best fishing kayaks of this decade. All right, so now I'm gonna jump into a brand that I spent a lot of time in and more of my professional career than with any other brand. And I'm gonna be using some of their products again in 2021. And that is uh, Wilderness Systems. Now, I'm gonna be super biased with this one, just like I was a lot with uh, Bonafide. It'll just fall on the sword and tell you guys that up front. Uh, but I really think that Wilderness Systems did a couple of things that were industry first that unlike other brands where some people adopted what they did, um, Wilderness Systems did a few things that everybody adopted. First and foremost, uh, and I'm not gonna break my arm patting myself on the back for being part of this, but I will at least throw it out there, uh, but slide tracks. Uh, slide tracks and putting tracks on the kayak before anybody else really did make the Wilderness Systems Tarpon Series the first true fishing kayaks that had fishermen in mind. It had a fishing name. It was named the Tarpon. The reason I give Jackson the credit for the full first standalone is I really was with odds with the leadership at Wilderness Systems at that time about the fact that that Tarpon boat is a fishing kayak first and a wreck boat second. But the fact that that boat started at a 10 foot, went to a 12, went to a 14, even went to a 16, uh, and still one of my favorite boats of all time, way before this last decade, so I can't even count it as the Tarpon 160i. That's a, a 16 foot boat. I loved it for scouting, covering water, fishing the flats, ocean surfing, you know, surf launching, covering big water, but that's a whole nother video. So Wilderness Systems also was the first company to, de to design an adjustable seat, a seat that slid fore and aft that would allow you to um, adjust the center of gravity. So me coming from the aviation industry and the military, adjustable seats was a big thing in the aviation industry. So it was a no brainer for me. And then with me being a bigger dude, I always wanted to balance a boat for me, for the gear that I was putting in the back and for the load that a fisherman carries including the fishermen and so i've got to give kudos to wilderness systems being the company that listened when i pounded on them for three or four years to develop the adjustable seat and we ultimately were the first to come to market with a seat that would slide fore and aft and allow you to trim the boat uh, in addition to that they were the first company to truly make a transducer port in the boat where you could take the pod out put the pod back in to have the battery um uh, integrated the depth finder integrated and have your transducer uh, fully in the water there's other companies like ocean kayak and hobie that made a pocket for the transducer that it, but wilderness systems was truly the first company to make that removable pod i uh, wish they'd have made it bigger but it was still the company that made that that first pod and so that was a big deal the wilderness systems ride 135 has got to be on the list of the top fishing kayaks of uh, the past decade because when it was on the market it was one of the top fishing kayaks period uh, for a couple of years in a row uh, with the you know leisure trends and outdoor uh, industry association and other places that tracked it it was the number one selling fishing kayak uh, at the time the number one selling standalone fishing kayak uh, where Jackson at that same time was the number one selling brand in, in for a couple of years for units actually the number one selling brand for units has almost always been pelican but we'll talk about that in a separate video as well because that's more of a big box you know churn and burn uh type deal but so the wilderness systems ride 135 definitely has to make the list um and a boat that's not from the past decade but i'll go ahead and throw it out there now 
uh, that is my favorite fishing kayak of all times. My personal favorite, not the one that I'm saying is the best fishing kayak of all times because it didn't have the sales numbers. It didn't have the industry impact. It didn't have the things that I'm taking into account to put this list together, but that would be the Wilderness Systems Commander 140. Still my favorite fishing kayak of all times. Love that boat. Wish they would bring it back. Um, love the hybrid concept. Love the, the simplicity of it. Love the stability of it with your feet being below the water line and the rigability, love taking it hunting, just loved everything about that boat. So the Wilderness Systems Ride 135, the Tarpon series, I'm just going to throw them all into one series. Uh, all right, before I move on from Wilderness Systems, I have a special place in my heart for this boat and this series of boats because it was really the first fishing kayak that I was on the leading edge of the design uh, had a lot of input on several other brands like the Ride 135, but that boat already existed. It was more of a rebrand. Uh, had a lot of input and was a driving force behind the Commander. Uh, but boat, the boat that I'm still probably the proudest of my involvement in uh, is the Attack. Um, the Attack 140, most specifically. Ultimately, it also evolved into a 120 uh, 12-foot platform, but the the few things that were done with that boat the big cockpit again the first true adjustable adjustable seat it go high and low and fore and aft integrated really nicely had the removable pod uh, for putting the depth finder in there um, and just a boat that was designed without worrying about looking like a fishing kayak in the wilderness systems line and getting them to depart from the you know the the, the skinny uh needle look that we had to have with all the other boats that we designed um, and really truly uh, a boat that at the time that it came out it had the pontoon style hull the volume out away from center line a lot like the ride but it was designed from the ground up as a fishing kayak and so the attack 140 definitely one of the best fishing kayaks of the past decade uh, one of you know my proudest accomplishments in this industry uh, and a boat that I think um, was before its time and if there was some technological things available, some advancements that were available back when we were doing that that are available today, it would probably still be the, you know, one of, if not the top selling fishing kayaks in the country. So I talked about this next brand in the best of 2020 category. So it definitely has to make the best of this decade. And that is the Feel Free Lure 11.5. Now they made a 13.5, they made a 10, but the 11.5 specifically, uh, there's a couple things that they did. First and foremost, they took advantage of the fact that Wilderness Systems didn't patent the removable module, uh, so they incorporated that into the boat. They put a really flat, clean standing platform, oversized handles that you didn't have to worry about ripping off that were molded into the boat, the wheel and the keel. But the thing that I think that they accomplished um, that really put them on the map is they had a seat that looked comfortable. Now, when that first started being mentioned to me, when I owned um, a kayak fishing shop back then called Hook One, and we were one of the first you know, companies to truly push that lure 11.5, is anglers would walk in, wives would walk in, people looking to buy fishing kayaks for other people would walk in and go, oh, that looks comfortable. I don't exactly know what looks comfortable means. Actually, I do, I think I look comfortable, but, and that may be the only reason Christy loves me is that I look, that I'm comfortable. So anyway, um, <laughs> but I think that that boat changed what the industry thought you could get away with and back then not a lot of premium features even on the ride um 11.5 or 115 uh x uh there was a scaled down version of the other boats right and, and it was it was it did really well i love that boat but it didn't do what the lure 11.5 did i think the wheel and the keel resonated with people I think the, the seat looked like a mini Lazy Boy, right? When you look at it, it literally looks like a mini Lazy Boy. So once I started to really understand what people were talking about, I realized that that seat looked comfortable. And so there's a thing in retail called the silent salesman and any boat that just sells itself without you having to say anything uh, is a good product. And so that boat didn't have to perform. You're not gonna win any sprints paddling an 11 and a half foot boat of any model, but you're definitely not gonna win it paddling a lure because it has the wheel and the keel which is great on ground but it creates a bit of drag on the in the water but anglers won't really care about performance especially when they first get into it they care about portability comfort you can watch my video i'll link it up in the description box about the top five factors for buying a fishing kayak but the lure hit most of those but it also hit a really good price point and it was one of those first boats to have 
a, a heck of a lot of premium features at a great price point. So the Lure 11.5, uh, the Feel Free brand itself makes the top manufacturers list, but they definitely knocked it out of the park with that boat. They did a great job of accessorizing uh, the Feel Free lineup. And so the Lure 11.5 makes that list 100%. All right, so if I could go back further than 10 years, I would have a few more boats on this list, but Ocean Kayak was the first company to ever make a true sit-on-top fishing kayak. Um, the Ocean Kayak founder, Tim Niemeyer, literally was the pioneer of this, and uh, the, the first sit-on-top fishing kayak I ever owned was an Ocean Kayak Frenzy. Now, if you saw me on an Ocean Kayak Frenzy right now, it would look like King Kong sitting on a pool float but that was the first fishing kayak I ever owned. I upgraded to a drifter. Uh, and again, I talked about where Old Town did a really great job, uh, or Johnson Outdoors did a really great job of pivoting their branding for the freshwater market more towards that Old Town thing. Cause I can't tell you how many times people would come into my shop in Tennessee and go, I really like that ocean kayak, but do y'all have it in the freshwater version? What? But I get it, right? People don't want to use a boat called ocean kayak in freshwater. And it bothers some people. So Johnson Outdoors, Old Town did a great job of kind of pivoting and putting their more premium fishing kayaks for freshwater under that Old Town brand. Uh, but one of the boats that really pushed the envelope for both being a performance boat, great rigability, great comfort, um, and, and still one of the best paddling fishing kayaks uh, ever made, not just in the past decade, but the Ocean Kayak Trident series, uh, the Trident overall, uh, in my opinion, there's a lot of other ones. Uh, Jim Salmons is probably going to throat punch me for only including this boat on the list. But uh, again, if we could go further back, the Drifter and, and some of those other boats would make it, um, the Prowler. But for the past decade, the Ocean Kayak uh, Trident uh, definitely makes it the list. And I'll throw a little soft mention in there for the, uh, the Ocean Kayak Big Game. Uh, I liked that boat, uh, but it just didn't do as well as I thought it would, the Trident. Uh, really killed it so if we're talking the past decade ocean kayak trident definitely has to be on the list of top fishing kayaks um all right so the next one i'm going to jump into i'm just going to say that i'm going to get a lot of hook heck yes and i'm going to get a whole lot of wtfs um but i'm just going to do it because you know why this is my channel and i could do whatever i want to so vibe kayaks brought a boat to the market and when vibe first started out I think they were really just an imported brand that slapped a brand name on their product and uh, started a company. Some guys out of Georgia put that thing together or a guy out of Georgia put that thing together. And the, here's the problem um, with that. They got a lot of heat for it being an imported boat and all that good stuff. But what I like about what Vibe has done is they've pivoted to designing their own boats or putting design concepts together and having those boats manufactured and even though they are an imported boat i mean just like feel free the only feel free actually owns their factory and they're not in china they're in taiwan and it's a whole different thing and uh and it's an american-owned company vibe is an american-owned company whether they import their boats or not but here's what it really boils down to vibe created a gateway product that got people into kayak fishing and if you do that you're good in my book regardless of any of the other minutia that's out there, right? Uh, I really kind of used to get irritated by a lot of the Vibe Pro Staff guys because, you know, people would post up, hey, I've narrowed it down to the Hobie PA or the Jackson Big Rig. What do you guys think? And there would be 17 Vibe guys that would jump in and say, have you considered the Vibe Seaghost? And that boat didn't even fit the parameter. So I got to throw that out there because if you're in this industry, you know what I'm talking about. I do like the fact that Vibe has pivoted. They've taken a different approach. They've kind of throttled back on some of that stuff. And they're making great fishing kayaks now. They make a good hybrid platform. A good buddy of mine, Ben Adrian, really, uh, you know, puts up some big numbers, does really well on those boats. And I think the Shearwater uh, was a really good platform to integrate a pedal drive into. Uh, had a lot of the same characteristics of, as a Bonafide SS-127. Got a lot of comparisons or criticism, whatever you want to call it for that. But listen, if you're going to talk about the best fishing kayaks of the past decade, you have to include a boat that came in and became a gateway product that got a lot of people into fishing, a lot of people into kayak fishing, still pushing the envelope. And I got to give credit where credit's due. 
I have tried to get three or four different companies to make a platform where you fold your seat down and you can stand on the back of it. And the folks at Vibe actually just pulled that off. So whether it was their original idea or not, uh, I know I didn't share it with them, so they definitely came up with it on their own. Uh, but as you can say, great minds think alike, that standing on the back, back of the seat platform is really cool. You can also sit there. Again, it's just one of those things for years uh, I wanted to try to pull off, couldn't get anybody I've ever worked with to do it. So kudos to the folks at Vibe uh, for pulling that off. But I really like the fact that that boat was a, a boat that got people into fishing. Uh, it got people into kayak fishing. They established a new price point. And uh, you may even see me try out a couple of Vibes this year because I can't post a fishing kayak video without somebody asking about the Vibe, Sea Ghost, or the Shearwater, or one of them. So, you know, maybe I'll pick one of those up and give you a run through and tell you what my thoughts are. All right, so last but definitely not least, I wanna say that I've been involved with these guys from pretty much the beginning. A, a gentleman named Vince Consoli uh, used to run their fishing team. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with this company from the beginning. Their boats didn't fit my style of fishing, meaning I was dragging my kayaks through the woods to get to my fishing spots. I was carrying them you know, over heels, and they were just the heaviest boats at the time, uh, and that's the Hobie. Um, Outback, which is definitely older than 10 years old, but a good buddy of mine uh, got on the Hobie team early on. I think he might have actually even been the first uh, Hobie pro staffer. I could have easily been right there with him if I wanted to, um, but I just, it didn't fit my style of fishing, okay? And to this day, and this is about to change, but to this day, I haven't really been a pedal drive guy. I like to paddle, and if I'm not going to paddle, I just turn the motor on and cover water, uh, but I'm definitely seeing where a pedal drive can be a great application, especially for some of the saltwater stuff that I'm gonna do, some of the long distance adventure stuff that I wanna plan on doing. Uh, the reliability has improved. Um, and uh, you've gotta give credit where credit's due. They started the pedal uh, drive revolution and they definitely lead in the pedal drive manufacturing. But what I also love is that they haven't rested on their laurels of having the best pedal drive with the Mirage Drive setup, but they've also continued. Uh, when Native was first to re reverse a couple years later, however many years later it was, uh, Hobie responded with the 180. Uh, and they could have just rested on their laurels with the 180. That really kind of uh, resonated with the kayak fishing community, but probably one of the coolest innovations that we've had as an industry uh, in the past, I don't know, since I can remember. Uh, is the Hobie 360 pedal drive. Now, I know that there's still some kinks or there were some kinks that they had to work out in the beginning, but that's true with any brand. That's true with any uh, manufacturer. So the Hobie PA 14 uh, is definitely the best fishing kayak of the last decade. Now, there's going to be a whole lot of people in this industry go, wait, 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 wait what did... Did Chad Hoover just say? Yeah, I just said the Hobie PA is the best fishing kayak of the past decade. Now, when I say PA, I'm most specifically referring to the PA-14. I think it's one of the best selling fishing kayaks of all times. I think it's one of the most riggable platforms of all times. Hobie has done a better job of fit and finish than I think anybody in the industry has done. They have done to kayak fishing what Harley Davidson did to motorcycles, their accessory game is on point. They're co-branding and working with other manufacturers like Gerber and Lowrance and, and some of the other partnerships that they've established. Uh, they've done a better job at that than I think anybody else has done. They were one of the first companies to market directly to fishermen and not market to paddlers. Uh, all of the kayak companies made the mistake in the beginning of going to paddle sport shows and marketing to paddlers for kayak fishing because they were already there at those shows. But what they didn't realize is where they should be marketing, and this is where Hobie was ahead of their time, um, they were going to the Bassmasters Classic. They were going to iCast. They were putting full-page ads in fishing magazines, and they were focused on fishing content. So the PA was obviously developed from the ground up as a fishing kayak. It's got pro angler in the name. Um, but that boat was also the first one to break the mold of what is a fishing kayak. It was the first one to step out of that arena. Uh, I think it paved the way for the 
the native titans of the world and for the bigger boats of the world, the big rig and things like that. Uh, and they also pushed the threshold for technological advancement for uh, integration, like that retractable transducer, <laughs> straight up, one of the best innovations that I've ever seen in kayak fishing. Love it. Um, uh, the H-Rail system, doing their own thing and not being dependent on uh, other accessory companies. Got to give credit where credit's due. Um, and they've also pushed the acceptable price point in paddle sports, which has done a lot for the sport. It's given them more of a marketing budget to go out and partner with guys like Iconelli and going out and, and doing Hank Parker from the get-go. So best fishing kayak of the past decade, the Hobie Pro Angler, best innovation of the past decade, that the Mirage Drive 360. So the best fishing kayak all the way around, you've got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, the best fishing kayak of the past decade, without a doubt, is the Hobie 360. There he is. Yeah! Mm. Look at that tank! Fish on! Oh my god!